We're joined once again by former Navy Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt. His website is PrayInJesusName.org. He has the new YouTube show, YouTube.com slash ChaplainGate. Well, I'm actually it's it's not so new anymore, right? I mean, this you've been doing the Pray in Jesus Name show now for is it like a year and a half? Yes, David, thank you for that introduction. I am Chaplain Klingenschmidt, and yes, PIJN News has been broadcast. Uh, actually, we only archive the show on YouTube.com slash Chaplain Gate. It's like Watergate, but I was a chaplain, so haha. Uh, we actually broadcast into 45 million homes every weekday morning on DirecTV, channel 378 on the NRB network. Uh, we're also on four smaller networks, including uh, the Walk TV and uh, various other outlets. Roku, you, if you buy a Roku device at Walmart, you can find us in the religious section. Well, what I was interested about that was, you know, with, with this very large distribution that you talk about, the 45 million homes and Roku, Walmart, etc., I was stunned today when I was reviewing the material on your YouTube channel and saw that your YouTube channel has only 393 subscribers, right? I mean, to what do you attribute such a small YouTube uh, presence given this huge distribution that you have? Well, like I said, we only archive our shows on YouTube. Most people, if they want to watch our program, they set their DVR to channel 378. And we do get uh, telephone calls. We have a prayer line, 866-Obey-God. Uh, that rings right to my cell phone. If I'm able to return the call, I will do that to pray with people. And, and I invite you know whoever wants to do it. We put the content out there for free, much like you do, David. And uh, I guess your distribution methods are more effective than mine. I, I'm shocked that you give out your cell phone number. I hope none of my audience calls you um, and and you know get, records the call and sends it to me or anything like that because I could see how that could lead to harassment. You know, <laughs> you say that tongue in cheek. Of course, you're always looking for a good soundbite. Uh, no, I I do get prank calls. In fact, someone called me last night and asked if I ever prayed to Satan or something like that. I said, I'm sorry, we don't take crank calls. He said, well, this isn't a crank call. This is a prank call. And I didn't understand the difference. So I, I said, God bless you. And I let him go. That's probably uh, but, for the best. Yeah. But so, <laughs> Chaplain, you know, I want to get to some of the issues here because we've been talking to you off and on for years. And as you've said, you don't care what happens with the legalization of same sex marriage, because in your view, uh, uh, same sex marriage is always illegal according to God, and you will never give up the fight. Brian Fisher has also said he doesn't care how many states legalize, he will never give up the fight. Are there any other issues? Because it does kind of seem, I know I, I don't want to, you know, maybe tell you something you haven't realized, but you're kind of losing this thing on the gay marriage. Are there other issues that are important to you? Because I mostly just hear the anti gay stuff. Well, uh, Two things about that. Boy, where do I go with that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I do believe God forbids sodomy. Right. And, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not anti-gay, but I am anti-sodomy, and I think there's a big difference there. So lesb uh, would lesbians be okay then? I haven't heard you talk too much about lesbians other than when you, you did an exorcism of a lesbian and she became straight after crying with you. Um, w uh, if it's sodomy, are lesbians okay? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 uh, that knowing that <clears throat> the penalty for perversion is death in, in God's eyes, uh, that uh, they forsake the natural use of the man for man and woman for woman. So in other words, uh, lesbians are also banned. And, uh, you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, 6, I believe, that uh, homosexuals and uh, prostitutes will not inherit the kingdom of God. So biblically, of course, these things can be debated. I have my PhD in theology. I, I think, know about that, yeah. I think you ask me these qu questions because you want me to give a biblical response. No, it's uh, not so much that. It's not so much that. Let, let me see if I can rephrase. In other words, what, what I'm, the crux of what I'm getting at, so to speak, is from an empirical reality point of view, the acceleration of the legalization of same-sex marriage is clear for anyone to see. While I recognize that because of your biblical beliefs, you're not deterred by that empirical reality, I'm curious if there are other issues that you are kind of taking under your wing, as the case may be. 
Well, absolutely. In fact, on our show, it's a it's a minority of things that we talk about that have to do with and touch on the gay agenda. Gotcha. Uh, generally, our show talks about religious freedom. PIJN News started as a religious freedom exercise to petition. We've now sent 4.5 million fax petitions to Washington, D.C. So you Did guys are still on the Pray in Jesus Name show. You're still using the fax machines. I th that, that I think will be an, an interesting thing for a lot of our audience. You fax stuff to Washington. We have the ability to do that, and our, our email subscribers, particularly uh, maybe 33,000 daily email subscribers, have sent 4.5 million petitions to Washington in the last uh, six years that wow. have nothing to do nothing to do with uh, traditional marriage. We sent maybe a few hundred thousand on that issue, yeah. but the vast majority has to do with religious liberty, has to do with uh, Israel, has to do with Second Amendment rights, uh, First Amendment rights, and especially pro-life. Uh, I was adopted when I was three years old, so I care about innocent children. I care, uh, you know, that the government should not be funding abortion with our tax dollars. Uh, we're very biblically based and traditional values show. It's just that Right Wing Watch likes to pull out my sound bites gotcha. about the agenda because those get the most uh, attention, I guess. Chaplain, so I, I'm going to take a kind of new approach with you here today. I sincerely believe that in your heart of hearts, you want to do whatever will reduce the number of abortions. Am I right in that analysis? Um, yes, as long as I don't compromise and, uh, you know, betray the least of these who, who would be uh, compromised if some legislation were passed. That's fair. So scientific study after scientific study. And I know that sometimes so-called science is at odds with what is in the Bible. And I want to maybe pull ourselves out from that just for a second. But scientific study after scientific study has shown that when you teach sensible sex education and by by that will our working definition is not abstinence only. Right. When you when you teach real sex education, and you provide affordable access to birth control to people, you reduce the number of abortions. And I like that because as a progressive myself, I don't want more abortions. I want the smallest number of abortions possible. And the science tells us that real sex education and birth control are the ways to achieve that. Along those lines, do you support that or do you support no birth control and abstinence only sex education. Well, it's interesting. I was just having this discussion. I went to uh, Juneteenth. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm almost ready to join the NAACP because I really love these people who uh, gathered in the park this Sunday here in uh, Colorado Springs. And we were having that same discussion with an AIDS prevention ministry. Okay. Now, of course, there's, there's two ways to look at this, right? First is the biblical model where abstinence until faithful marriage between one man and one woman is the biblical standard. And of course, uh, I think every uh, Sunday school teacher ought to be teaching that. That may uh, be, but let's. What, the conversation I want to have with you is not everybody follows the Bible and not everybody believes that it's the word of God. So we need to have a policy that will reduce abortion regardless of your religion, right? Yes. OK, uh, good, and, good. Well, no. <laughs> but oh, we don't. <laughs> Well, honestly, abstinence is a way to prevent disease. Abstinence is a way to encourage children to learn the biblical model, to be faithful, to to get married, and to protect the children, ultimately. But we uh, have to be concerned with practicality, Chaplain. Never getting in a moving vehicle, boat, train, or airplane is a really good way to prevent any of the negative things that could come from such activities. But to preach that would be ridiculous, right? It wouldn't take into consideration the realities of modern life. Well, I think that's a false analogy because having unsafe sex or unbiblical sex is the train wreck. That is the sin. That, but that unsafe, unsafe sex and unbiblical are different things. Unsafe takes on presumably a scientific point of view as to what are risky behaviors. Unbiblical, it's arbitrary whether people follow your Bible or another or none at all. Well, a lot of uh, contraception does sadly end in abortion as I've emailed you, David, and I've asked you to, to check out the scientific facts on this since you're a man of science and all. Right. Uh, that, that abortifacient drugs like the Plan B pill or RU486 actually don't prevent the conception. They, they actually cause an abortion by preventing the implantation of a living 
organism with unique DNA. A yeah, fetus. but Chaplin, you know, we're, you know that that we're not going to agree on that because, as you said, I am a man of science, and the scientific point of view on Plan B is that it is not an abortion at all. As you, you're correct, it prevents the implantation, whereas an abortion is the termination of a pregnancy. But we're you, it's we're not going to get anywhere if we argue semantics. My audience, I think, knows what side the science is on. But what we want to get from you is whether you would support what science shows us leads to fewer abortions. Well, we all want fewer abortions. And if someone is going to not follow the Bible and engage in risky behavior, of course, uh, they ought to protect themselves from disease and they ought to uh, have the best interest of the child in mind, not their own selfish lusts and, and pleasures. Uh, children are ultimately uh, the ones that ought to be protected, as you agree, and I think our public so society and our policy ought to reflect that. All right. You know, I have to say, Chaplin, when we talk about these issues as opposed to the anti-gay issue where you're just like out in outer space on, I disagree with you, but it's a much more reasonable conversation, I think, because when we talk about the gay stuff, you talk about demonically possessed animals that transfer their gayness from Satan to people and all these, uh, you know, exorcisms of gay you know, people. I've never, it, I've never said that except to quote the Bible. All I did was quote the Bible that when Jesus cast demons out of the man who was possessed. They yeah. went into some pigs who jumped over a cliff. So right. don't twist my words. But that see, way. that's exactly my example. What, when you say that versus when we have this conversation about abortion, we disagree on the abortion thing, but you're not talking about demonic pigs. I think it resonates <laughs> with people more. I think people will respect you a lot more if you focus on those issues. OK, Chaplain, we, we are out of time. It's always good to check in with you. The YouTube archives of your show are at YouTube.com slash chaplain gate. And I do encourage people to check it out. I subscribe to it because it is truly fascinating what's on there. Thank you, David. It's an honor to be with you. Please also subscribe to our email alerts at prayinjesusname.org. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. Thanks, chaplain. God bless. Bye bye.